right, it's open beta time and we have VRChat 2021.2.3 now. And this comes out with a lot of neat client things like the identity update with a bunch of different profile things. I won't be talking about that because I focus on the Udon and SDK assets. So if we go down to the bottom, there's three main things that they've added and two of them are rather similar. First, we have object and int arrays can now be shuffled using utilities.shuffleArray. Now, if you want to have like let's say an array of like game objects or something, and you want to do a specific thing with them, but like randomize them. Like say you're, you have a deck of cards and you want to swap up the order of those cards. You can use utilities.shuffle to make that happen. So utilities.shuffle array, you just take whatever array that you have. I have a, a game object array here and you pass that into here and on interact, it will entirely rearrange the order of that array. You can do that with any kind of objects or components, but you can't do it with like say strings, for example, that does not work. But you can also do it for int arrays specifically. So you can swap it down to int instead of T for type, you can swap it down to int and then slide in the int array and it will shuffle that list of numbers as well. Next, we have VRC object pool can now shuffle its spawn order using VRC object pool dot shuffle. This is very similar to the last thing, only this one is very useful for your deck of cards situation. So right here, I have a object pool with five cubes in it, and each one is just a normal pickup script. And this button right in the center just tells it to shuffle and spawn every time you click it. So we have our object pool variable that's public in the inspector and just dragged it in. Then we tell it to shuffle, and then we tell it to try to spawn each time. So if I hit play, you'll see that when we click on this button, it'll come in a different order each time. And then I have a button on the right that just resets all of them back to being disabled. So middle, left, left, right, right, reset, left, right, left, middle, right. It's a different order every time. And for reference, my behavior for resetting the pool is just a for loop that iterates through each one of them with the length of the object pool's pool game object array. And for each one, it tells the object pool itself to return that object, basically just turning it off. Lastly, we have Udon behaviors now have a disable interactive property, which you can get and set to control whether an object with an interact event should accept pointer raycasts and show an interactable outline and tooltips. Basically, this just toggles whether or not you can actually interact with it. Basically, it's the disabled state that you're turning on, so it might be a little bit inverse of what you would expect. So if we look at my button here, this one just toggles the interaction of the spawn button right here. So if we open that up, you'll see it's just a basic unary negation of get disable interactive flipped over into set disable interactive. And whenever you press the button, it toggles whether or not that actually is usable. So if I hit play here, you'll see that I can spawn the objects as I did before. But when I press the button on the left, the center button doesn't get any highlights whatsoever while I hover over it. When I click it again, I can use it again. And there you go. Those are the three main things that they have added on the SDK and Udon side for this new open beta. Again, a lot of the things in this open beta are for the identity update, which I did not cover. But there's a lot of features here that I definitely recommend you going through and maybe someone else will have a video on that. But until then, we'll see you around.